Welcome to MSP Voice, the weekly show for MSPs by MSPs. Brought to you by CloudBerry, the number one cross-platform cloud backup. Learn more at cloudberrylab.com. This is MSP Voice. Hello and welcome to MSP Voice. This is episode number 45. Got a great interview today with Jorge out of Texas. Um, talks about uh, what they're doing down there. It's great to meet him in person at a, at a conference recently. So definitely stick around for the interview. Um, housekeeping item first off, mspvoice.com. As you know, your source for all things MSP Voice. Uh, got a couple of new things up this week. First off, we've got two, yes, two webinars next week. <clears throat> um, the first one on May 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern um, is with Stuart Crawford with Ulistic. Um, he does marketing for MSPs. He's actually a, a good friend of the show. Um, several of his MSP customers or clients um, have actually been on MSP Voice. So definitely check that out. Um, Stuart's a great guy. Uh, should have a lot of great information in terms of marketing for MSPs. Um, and then following that up on May 9th, just two days later at 2 p.m. is Virtus Law. So Thomas Bafinski of Virtus Law is going to cover um, some basic things that most MSPs have to deal with. Um, most, first off, being employee retention, right? Retaining key employees. So they're gonna, he's gonna talk about building benefits programs, corporate culture, compensation, um, variable, compensation based on performance and based on group performance and those types of things. Um, even talk about equity and, and stock options. Um, and then also talk about some other, other services that their firm officer offers like managed service agreements, um, asset protection strategies, those types of things. So definitely two webinars next week, check them out. Um, but otherwise, mspvoice.com is your source. Um, next up, we've got some Articles from the internet, MSP related. So first off, um, I found this, this article pretty interesting. Um, Tim Conkle of The 20 fame um, really talks about the importance of peer groups um, for MSPs. Um, I've talked to a lot of different people on this show. Um, a lot of them talk about the importance of peer groups. You know, I'm not necessarily saying one is any better than the other. Um, this article just has to be about the 20, um, but I like how he presented it, you know, in terms of, you know, you can't be afraid to talk to your competitors. Um, a lot of times, you know, understanding how geographically dispersed we are, um, they're not your competitors. Um, they're going through the same stuff that you are and peer groups are a great way to learn from others, but also impart your knowledge. Uh, so anyway, I just thought this was an interesting article, so check it out. Um, next up, security again, um, a little bit more, you know, kind of on the Wipro uh, breach that we talked about on last episode. Um, but this one really talks about the IT service management tools um, and, you know, those getting possibly compromised uh, and, you know, MSPs getting frustrated that they're hearing about these breaches from the news instead of from the tools providers, the, um, you know, that, that, that they rely on every day. Uh, so it, it, I kind of take this one with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, they, they talk a lot about, they talk about the Wipro breach um, and the fact that, you know, they used ConnectWise control um, you know, possibly to, to, to carry out this attack. Um, but, you know, from the ConnectWise perspective, it was a legitimate use of the tool. Um, you know, if you've got somebody on the inside, you know, using the tools for nefarious reasons, you know, that's obviously an issue. Um, it doesn't sound like, you know, ConnectWise control was specifically breached or anything like that. It was just that someone had gained access to those systems and then used that mechanism to then spread out the malware and those types of things. So, you know, it's kind of interesting, but, you know, does it ask the question of should there be more accountability for the vendors um, in the security space? Because, you know, again, you guys rely on these tools every day um, to, to do your jobs, but if they're getting compromised, you know, then that's leaving you up for a big risk, no matter how much you pay on all the latest and greatest, you know, security type features, if your tools are getting compromised, that's no good. And that's, that's kind of the, the general gist of the story. So I'd love to hear some comments on that. Um, next up, um, an interesting article on channel convergence. So this is um, from Rob Spree, who attended the Channel Partners Conference and Expo that was in Las Vegas um, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it was basically his observations of you know, different kind of models that, are, that exist out there. Um, and th this idea of converging these two models. But, you know, will it actually happen um, or not? And the two models are the telecom agents and the managed service providers. 
Um, and the fact that, you know, from a telecom agent's perspective, they, they kind of sell it once and then they move on to the next one. It's, it's, there's not a lot of, um, you know, maintenance necessarily needed um, on that. Whereas the managed service provider, yes, you have to sell it, but then you also have to maintain it and keep the customer happy and all those types of things. Um, so that's why he's talking about kind of two different uh, sales models. And, you know, will they actually converge with the telecom providers offering MSP services and those and MSP is offering telecom. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a, a close call, I guess. Um, he basically thinks it, it's not mostly because the telecom agents are resistant, resistant to change um, as some of the MSPs are too. So um, again, check this article out. If you're kind of wondering about, you know, this idea of convergence and different types of sales models um, and, you know, can one, company or, or one agent, you know, service both, or is it really two separate types of, of roles and, and companies? Um, interesting article on that. And finally, acquisition news. I'm sure you've all heard that SolarWinds has acquired Pass Portal uh, for their MSP password management as a service. Um, you know, another, just an example of another acquisition. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing this, and I, I, I don't think we're done yet <laughs> I mean, acquisitions in the MSP space, especially not for 2019. Um, we're not even halfway through it yet. We've already seen uh, quite a few. Um, but, you know, reading the article and, and from what I've heard, you know, if you're a Pass Portal customer, but you don't use SolarWinds, it sounds like you're going to be okay. They're going to try to keep all the integrations there, um, you know, th that they were already there and, and, you know, not force you to now move to SolarWinds. Um, and if you're using SolarWinds but not Mass Portal, you know, I, I doubt you're going to have to change there either. Although, obviously, we're talking about bundles now. Um, I'm sure you will see some attractive bundles um, in terms of, you know, SolarWinds not being able to bundle a lot of these different things together and offer, trying to offer you savings and those types of things. You know, with acquisitions, it's always a, you know, gloom and doom when it's first announced. But I always, you know, I always tell people, let's wait and see. Um, what actually happens and um, how things go. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get on to our interview. Again, Jorge Prieto um, out of Texas. Great interview. And I will talk to you guys next week. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Today I am pleased to be joined by Jorge Prieto um, out of Texas, uh, the, the greater Dallas area. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, um, I know you guys were at the ASCII show in Dallas a couple of weeks ago. Um, so you know, and that you said that was your first ASCII. Yeah, yeah, actually, and then ended up joining at the end of the uh, cool. event. Cool. So why don't you tell us a little about yourself and you know, your Blackland Technologies? Okay, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Blackland, you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, what is Blackland, especially if they're not from the area. Blackland is actually, uh, if you look at Blackland Prairie, it's a big strip of land that crosses all, all uh, through uh, uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. And the, the land is literally, it's, it's the clay. It's a dark, dark, almost black. So that's okay. black land prairie. And if you're from this area, you're going to see that there's a lot of other uh, businesses, you know, named black land just because of the, the area. So cool. anyway, that's where the name comes from. But <laughs> um, as far as uh, the history, like my history, I guess I've been doing this uh, on my own for 14 years in huh? May. I will have been doing it for in my own. I've worked with uh, a lot of other companies, IT uh, companies, ISPs, um, Pro System was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I uh, I decided to to start on my own. Like I said, about okay. fourteen years ago, and uh, started doing break fix. Uh, my first <laughs> client was actually a uh, nurse practitioner, and uh, and then another doctor. And so yeah, I went from there. And uh, a couple of years ago, well, actually about three years ago, uh, my now partner, Terry, who I've known for 20 years, mm -hmm. he'd been doing the same thing. And he said, hey, you know, why don't we uh, join forces and you know, cool. we'll probably do a lot, a lot better. And that's uh, so what we did. About a couple of years ago, we formed Blackland. So that's cool. Sort of now, now, do you guys have like a, do you have a, I'm guessing, have you transitioned mostly to MSP now or are you still doing break fix? Uh, it's all MSP right now. We do okay. break fix, but it's usually with the with the intent of of, of trans uh, transitioning people over to MSP. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of you, you get your foot in the door, and then you say, "Look, whatever thing I can do if you go on a managed plan." You know, <laughs> right, right. I mean, on top of that, it always. Uh, I mean, we have years and years of data. I mean, obviously, like I said, I've been doing this for fourteen years, and then we, you know, we have a lot of data that 
that we've compiled and, you know, there's all the numbers usually point to certain, you know, certain averages and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we cannot move that the MSP or MSP model is essentially all, almost always going to save you 90% of the time is going to yeah. save money, you know, to go in over MSP, you know, over uh, going to MSP over a break fix. Yeah. No, and that's, you know, a lot of, a lot of the folks I talk to, you know, almost everyone started on break fix. Most of them now transition to MSP. Some of them still do break fix. Um, you know, and there, there's still some need out there for, for people to do that. And some people like it. So, you know, so. I'm not to judge. <laughs> no, no, no. And there's different reasons why people do it. Um, sometimes it's a matter of trust and, and we've, that's another thing, you know, we, we can't, we cannot expect somebody to just sort of, sort of, um, trust us and say, hey, sign this, you know, yeah. your contract. Hey, you, you never <laughs> met us before, babe. We were, we're, we're fully trusting them. So, yeah, so this, the, the break fix can be a little bit of a warm up period and getting to know us and, you know, getting to uh, hopefully like us. <laughs> so, you know. So, so you mentioned you had a, you know, you, you talked about you kind of had a, a career first in the corporate world. Yeah. Um, and so what made you, what was the, what was the deciding factor for you to just break out on your own? What was, what was the, the magic moment, so to speak? It was, there, there was a magic moment. There was a magic moment, actually, specifically at uh, working through this, this company. And um, where I felt like um, I had to basically be more lenient like, or with, the, with the clients. Like, mm -hmm. The clients were a little bit demanding. And... Um, and they were not particularly nice. And, uh, and, and anyways, long story short, at this particular place, I ended up not getting my, I was contract for the first okay. couple of days. And then they would, they would transition you over to, uh, to employee, to full-time employee. Well, they ended up not renewing my contract after mm -hmm. going through, you know, through these really belligerent uh, clients or whatever. I was help desk. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, okay, well, um, I like what I do. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. and that's why I've been doing it. Um, but I don't like the fact that it's um, that all the effort and sacrifice that I'm doing, the only benefit that I was getting basically was not getting fired. <laughs> so at that point, yeah, at that point, I thought, okay, I, uh, you know, if I'm going to, you know, go through all the sacrifice and all this, mm -hmm. all these different things, it, it's got to be from my own personal direct benefit. So yeah. That's yeah. And, and I understand because I, you know, I've, I've done consulting in the past early in my career and it's, you look at what the company is billing you out for, you right. know, you're billing you out for $300 an hour and you're making like $30 an hour. It's like, mm -hmm. wait, there's, where's the disparity here? And it's like, you, you realize, Hey, I could go out on my own. I don't need to charge $300, but I could be making a lot more than $30 an hour, so to speak. And it wasn't so much <laughs> the money, believe it or not. No. Uh, you know, that's it has never been about the money. It's still not about the money. Don't get me wrong. That's always nice. Yeah. But the, the main impetus here was, again, was just one, if, you know, if I'm going to be yelled at and insulted by, by a client, <laughs> at least I'm getting paid for it. You know, I'm getting all the benefit for yeah. it directly. Right. So instead of just, well, be nice to them or we won't fire you. No. And on top of that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot more flexibility. There's a lot on, and, and another big one is that I'm not at the mercy of just, oh, well, you know what? Um, somebody messed up on, on, on this, on the budget. So, hey, you're going to have to be let go. So it's, you know, if, if there's a mess up, if there's a problem with the budget, if there's anything, it's my own fault, right? Yep. <laughs> guess, no, or not my partners. We'll, we'll blame you know, CFO. So, we'll. so, how, so um, you know, you mentioned you guys, you guys merged together. Um, mm -hmm. how, how, how large are you guys now? Do you have employees? Is it still just the two of you? No, just the two of us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, every now and then we do use contracts. We use a lot of contractors, but, uh, and that's, that's been another, uh, thing that's interesting, right? So everybody does MSP differently, of course. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we notice in talking to a lot of, uh, you know, friends and colleagues that, that own MSPs is the, Number one, everybody has a different secret sauce, right? As far as mm -hmm. like, you know, how we do it per endpoint, per user, um, you know, we charge this much, we do all inclusive, we don't include projects, we do include projects. We So it goes all over, excuse me, 
Uh, but on top of that, um, the uh, another issue is that we've noticed that how many employees they have per endpoint varies. Okay. So it varies a lot. It's it's pretty wide. Um, so we noticed some some people had a couple hundred endpoints, and somehow they managed to have three four employees. Oh. You know, so I'm. I'm just shocked. Whereas by myself, I was doing uh, over 200 endpoints just mm -hmm. prior to that. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure really where we're different, where we differ. Maybe the pricing is different. Maybe the, okay. the market, I'm not sure. So, so yeah, we, that's a, that's a big thing we've, uh, we've discovered is that it, it varies widely on, on, on the coverage of technician per endpoint or okay. number of endpoints per technician. Yeah. And now <clears throat> um, when you, you know, look at your, your customer base. Do you specialize in any particular verticals? Do you, you know, or are you just kind of, you know, hey, anybody, anybody that needs IT help, we're going to help you or? So our main verticals uh, are healthcare, one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do also um, have some title companies, title insurance companies. Okay. And, um, and professional services. So professional services uh, okay. usually are pretty good clients. They're sort of low maintenance lawyers, CPAs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They're low maintenance until something breaks and then they're calling you. And, and yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're a lot easier to maintain. So it's, it's not the same as like a doctor's office. A doctor's office is a little different, right? Yeah. So in a doctor's office, you rarely ever get to uh, interact with the, with the owners, the doctors. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, usually the, the practice manager, the office manager, that kind of stuff. And uh, with the uh, with the lawyers, CPAs, I mean, you see them every day, and it's a you know, it's it's a different relationship for sure. Okay. So. No, no, it's, it's always it's always you know, like I said, when you interact with the owner, um, it's it's probably a, a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking of customers and customer acquisition, how do you guys go out and and obtain new customers? You strictly rely on referrals, or are you doing AdWords, or you know, what's what's your advertising? Plan, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the bulk of our of our clients are actually um, definitely referrals. Okay. So and I mean that that's how I grew up and uh, you know it, like I said I got in with a nurse practitioner 14 years ago mm -hmm. and she started talking to doctors that she knew and blah 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 and so um, I've had clients from you know neurologists nephrologists uh, cardiologists every. Yeah, about everything you can think of. <laughs> every ologist. Uh, yes, <laughs> the referrals have definitely have been the, the the biggest. Now the um, the other uh, the other way that that we've tried to do is Facebook. Now that that to be honest with you, it's a it's sort of a new thing for me. <laughs> I think it's okay. uh, it's more of a um, it's more of an experiment than anything mm -hmm. else. And uh, we try different things on Facebook. But the uh, the majority is really just either calling people up, uh, I mean literally yep. cold calling, or uh, or warm calling. So mm -hmm. you know, hey, you know this this guy, um, you know I work with Mark, and you know I know you know him from this and that, and uh, you know we do his his computers, blah blah blah. You know, would you be interested in uh, sitting down with us for you know or a fifteen minute call or whatever? Yeah. So those are usually, but yes, I would say referrals, either warm refer. Uh, Either uh, re referrals are obviously the best. So yeah. worm calling and, and, and cold calling is, is probably the okay. <laughs> uh, is it our least favorite. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, so. most people don't like cold calling. Yeah. Um, so you know, if, if you had to give advice to someone who was you know just starting out, you know, like you did 14 years ago, what kind of advice would you have for someone just starting out in this business that we call managed services? Um. Things that I yeah I wish that I wish I would have known is work with who you know. I mean, chances are you already know some people that work mm -hmm. at you know at different companies. If you're already at say a break fix, um, you're gonna have people coming in and ask them where they work. You know, they could mm -hmm. be a, a nurse at a at a doctor's office. They could be, you know, a receptionist. Uh, they could be a lawyer themselves. I mean, so yeah. you never know. If you're a break fix and you already have a place and somebody's coming in, ask them. You know, talk to them, get to know them. Uh, but like I said, work with, you know, if, if you know, your, your friends, um, mm -hmm. company where he works at your, your sisters, your mothers, anybody that, you know, <laughs> yeah, everybody that you, uh, that you know, is usually they're going to be your best bet because you can say, Hey, yeah. already, you know, uh, my mom is, 
Martha or whoever, and uh, <laughs> and I guess like Batman and Superman, <laughs> and yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So those are usually going to be your best referrals. So people people that you already know, and uh, whether it's through your break fix uh, business or um, or they're related to you, your friends of yours. Yeah. Like, so. Yeah, I know my mom worked for, she worked for Laurie's office for years and it's like, <clears throat> you know, it would have been perfect if I was, if I was, had gotten into the business, I could just go mm. to, go to her and say, Hey, you know, let me kind of introduce me to your boss and let's <laughs> see if I can yeah. do the IT for him. So, uh, definitely understand what you mean about start with who you know. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and, uh, no, go ahead. Go, oh, I was going to say, you know, kind of building on that, you know, based on your experience, what's like the best part of, of what you do in terms of managed services and, and helping out these companies? Oh, man, well, to be honest with you, the the biggest um, the thing that I love the most about working on, on on computers, well, one, I love the work itself, right? I mm-hmm. love computers. Yeah. But uh, I do like the fact that it's we we bring to these companies. Um, they always tell us to. Uh, I don't know what it is, but they always tell us, well, Jorge and Terry, you know, we we like the fact that you guys don't treat us they're not you're not condescending you guys help us out you guys explain uh, so unfortunately in this industry i'm sure you've, you know you've heard this many times we have kind of a we have kind of bad uh reputation for uh for not being not having really good people skills right yeah and so we come off as we come off as uh arrogant we come off as uh condescending and uh so when somebody is generally um grateful and happy that something is working and mm-hmm. they don't feel stupider for it that yeah. that's always a big thing so that's okay. a huge huge win yeah i i know i've been accused of being condescending sometimes with <laughs> with friends and family it's like how yeah, do you yeah. not know, how do you not know how to do this you Same. know it's like <laughs> Same. i think we're meaning to our to, we're meaner to our friends or family for sure probably yes <laughs> <laughs> what about uh what what's one of the worst things of of managed services um the stress you have a lot of you mm-hmm. have a lot of uh responsibility yeah i would say I, it, it's funny that uh i'm not pushing for this by any means but it's just <laughs> funny just how this this uh industry is unregulated there's nothing you know there's no license mm-hmm. no permits nothing no checks nothing yeah and you have so much information Yep. financial, uh, private records, health information uh, at your fingertips, you know? So it is, it's a huge responsibility. So I, and, and for my partner, Terry, I know that literally keeps him up at night sometime. Wow. You know, he'll wake up in the middle of the night. Sometimes it's like, okay, I just had a random thought that this back up, that that back up, or is this, you know, is this running? Is it, yeah. you know, make sure this is up. And so he'll get up and he'll go check and, you know, he'll, so it, it's, it's stressful. It's a lot of, it's a lot of responsibility, you know, millions of dollars in the, on the line sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, we've gotten um, clients who uh, we come in and they said, yeah, the last computer guy, they totally erased all our data. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> That's, that's to me, that's, that's the most, uh, that's, I would say is the quote unquote worst part of it. It's just the stress. Yeah. Yeah. It's stress. Like you said, it's, it's about the responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. Making sure that, you know, your, your customers are relying on you to, to not mess up. Yeah. So to yeah. speak. And then, you know, when you do it, it can be stressful. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's not just that, I mean, it's not just the business you have in your hands. It's not just this data. The data represents literally the life of this company. The company mm-hmm. represents their livelihood, you know, that you, your, your client, you know, the, the owner, whoever, the doctor, but on top of that, everybody who's under that, I mean, it's, yeah. um, I ran in Ohio, this was only a couple of weeks ago, a company, uh, got hit by ransomware, all their data got, um, uh, got encrypted. And, uh, the doctor said, you know what, we're just going to retire early. So wow. they close, they just closed the, the practice. Yeah. So it, it's, it can affect a lot of people downstream. Mm-hmm. So, so. Definitely very serious thing um so we you mentioned um you know that you were at ascii in, in dallas and then you actually joined ascii what about other kind of msp community do you do you partake in um you know whether it's online or, or offline um another one it's another facebook group it's uh, it bog uh, mm-hmm. i wouldn't say it's specifically for for msps 
Yeah. Um, but it's, it's for IT business. So it's actually IT business owners group. On yeah. Yep. And so we partake uh, on that one, uh, Facebook, a lot of Facebook groups, um, LinkedIn, but I, I would say specific groups like that, like say MSP Alliance or anything. We thought about joining MSP Alliance. We haven't yet, but um, okay. I can't think of anything else. Like what about said, Reddit? And uh, Reddit, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually on your podcast, I saw you were referencing on something on, on Reddit, actually, on the, on the MSP. Oh. So I noticed that. Yes, I read it. Absolutely. Okay. That's one of the best cool. sources of information. Cool. So thinking about technologies, mm -hmm. um, whether it's available today or in the near future, whether it's work related or personal, what technologies are you most excited about? Um, AI. Mm -hmm. AI. I'm the most excited and the most scared about it. Yeah, well, that's my next question. Which one are you most worried about? <laughs> yes, so it's, it's both. It's the same one. It's absolutely the same one. So I'm most excited about AI um, because it, it'll be, be able to simplify a lot of things, automate mm -hmm. a lot of day-to-day uh, -day tasks, um, lower costs. And, uh, and I'm, I'm afraid of it for the same reason. It's yeah. going to automate a lot of tasks. It's going to make <laughs> things a lot easier. So um, I think if, if, if you're on the MSP, if you're in IT, really any field at this point, to be honest, mm -hmm. with you, uh, whether it's law, whether it's medicine, whether you're an artist, it doesn't matter. I think if you're not taking AI serious at this point and you think that I'm, 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 AI will never touch my job because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's beyond awesome or beyond yeah. complicated. I think you're, you're deluding yourself. <laughs> um, so you, you have to take, I think at this point, you have to take it pretty seriously. You have yeah. to take that into consideration. See how in, in, again, of course, it's a little, you know, in the future, but it, not to, you know, we're going to see this definitely here, I would say probably next 10, 20 years um, or earlier, where uh, if you don't, if, if you're not taking AI as part of the equation, you know, as part of whether it's you're an MSP, you're a break fix, you're going to be left in dust. I think you're going to, you're going to realize that a lot of what you used to do, I mean, think AI mm -hmm. added, uh, you know, layered on top of your RMM. Yep. Um, you know, your RMM can already tell a bunch of things. And I think AI that, that can actually figure out how am I going to solve this problem? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I know, I know there's some companies already working on that. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you, you're using AI for, some of that, you know, for the tools and things like that, that, that MSPs use on a day-to-day -day basis. There is already actually a company, I can't remember what it's called, Ranch or something. I can't remember what it is. But essentially, <clears throat> it, it, you pay a, a monthly fee and um, they have some kind of AI help desk thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and they will solve a bunch of uh, a bunch of problems. I mean, I'm not saying that it's perfect and you can, you know, <laughs> a lot of people will say, well, you know, but it was not going to be able to figure, okay, not yet yeah right? but it's not too far off in the future again if you're not taking this into consideration especially if you're if you're thinking you know you you want to grow your company and you want to keep it for the next again you know 10 20 30 years who knows i mean depending if you're not taking this part of the equation you're gonna find yourself uh i wouldn't say out of a job but you're gonna find it that it's it's gonna get harder and harder to convince people to get on board if you're not um, if you don't have AI on your side somehow. Yeah. And, and I think that's true. You know, the IT industry in general goes through, you know, it's like a 10 to 15 year cycle where things change dramatically. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, every, every 10 to 15 years. And, you know, as you know, when you're helping manage people's IT, you need to make sure that you understand what those changes are that are coming up and how they're going to affect you, how it's going to make your job better, new right. services that you can offer, all these types of things. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely something you need to consider. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally different. I mean, uh, RMM, um, we have some, some clients that they like to have access to, to the, uh, to the RMM or part of mm -hmm. it to at least be able to see themselves what's on it. So, because, uh, you know, with an RMM, it, sim it simplifies a lot of things. It makes yeah. it a lot easier. You know, you have a, a dashboard and you can see, you know, at a glance, it's not a very technical thing. So yeah. it's, it, you know, it's really lowering the uh the threshold of, of knowledge and experience that you need to have to be able to take care of a lot of this stuff so which is, again it's a good thing right? it lowers the cost but it's again it, it's a bad thing and again it depends on how you use it if you if you're like 
in Blockbuster and you fight it, you're going to end up like Blockbuster. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we are now at the rapid fire round. Oh, um, this, this is meant to be fun. Okay. Um, so it's not taxing. Six quick, six quick questions, quick right. question, quick answer. All right. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> All right. First up, Apple or Android? Uh, Apple. Okay. Mac, Linux, or Windows? Windows. Amazon, Azure, or something else? Amazon. Okay. Local backups, cloud, or both? Both. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Should, should you always virtualize? Yes. Okay. And finally, which is worse, printer support or vendor cold calls? <laughs> <laughs> oh, printer support. I can okay. deal with vendors. Vendors I can hang up on. I can't hang up on my clients without <laughs> printer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. After forty plus episodes, I think printer support is winning out on, on yes. that last one. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, uh, that's a that's a good question, especially on the on the on the cloud and and local backup. Uh, yeah. You won't believe how many people say it's like no, but I already have it on a you know on a, on a hard drive or a USB drive or a tape drive or whatever. Yeah. And then. Yeah, what happens when your office gets flooded or burns yeah. down? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, has anyone checked it? Is anyone checking this 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 local drive? It's like, well, no, I switch out tapes. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they could be switching that all day long, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so, before we go, any last words of advice for the listeners out there? Anything you want to? Um, yeah. If you are a break fix. And, and you want to transition to, to MSP. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of, I don't know what I would call it, uh, not misinformation, but there, there's a lot of ideas on, 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 on how to transition from, from break fix to MSP. But one of the things that they usually don't talk about is that you have to have a completely different mindset. Mm -hmm. So I understand, you know, like, like I said, I've loved working on computers. I've been working on computers one way or another since I was 12 or 11. I mean, I made yeah. it earlier. So, and, uh, but it's not the same as, especially if you want to be a business owner, if you want to have your own MSP, mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing. Having your own MSP, working on MSP is completely different from a break, break fix. Owning an MSP is completely from, different from working on an MSP. So, being a business owner, it takes, it takes a different mindset, right? Yeah. It's not just a technician. You're not, you know, if you, if you like your nine to five, you enjoy going home <laughs> and just forgetting about the, you know, the work until the next day, then, then stick with, stick with your job. If, yeah. But if you want to work, you know, or, or have that in your head, you know, 24 seven and, uh, then yes, you can attempt to try and be a, be a business owner, but it's, it's not the same thing. And, and again, um, that's, that's the thing you don't realize until you're pretty far in. So yeah. you might say, no, I'm pretty good with computers. I'm pretty good with servers. I have plenty of uh, experience, years of experience, <laughs> you know, but it, again, it, you have experience on the computer side. When it comes to business, you're going to realize pretty quickly that a, you either, have to learn or do like I did make a bunch of mistakes mm -hmm. you know, over 14 years to, to get to where you are and, uh, and, and keep hammering at it. Sometimes it's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of up, uh, ups and downs, but, uh, or you have to, um, uh, you know, if you're making enough, you just have to get it delegated, you know, pay yeah. somebody else, you know, yeah. I did all my, I've been doing all my accounting forever. And <laughs> now it's my, now luckily it's my partner. <laughs> and that's, I'm glad that that's over there. But I, you know, I was doing my my uh, my own accounting for well the past 13 years, I guess. Yeah. And uh, so if you're not willing to go through all this stuff and and making a bunch of mistakes, and getting burned a bunch of times, then you know, find somebody else who <laughs> wants to take that. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see a lot of posts. You know, people asking, "Hey, I'm starting. What what you know? What RMM? What PSA? You know, all this stuff. What should I use?" And it's like. Well, do you know accounting? You know, do you understand marketing? You know, do you understand sales? You know, because those are way more important than the technology that, you, yeah. that you're going to end up using. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your your tools you can pick up anywhere, anytime. The 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 other thing is just there's a you have to have pretty high tolerance for um 
for things going bad, I mean, yeah. flat out, you know, um, you can have, I mean, at the, at the beginning, especially if you're break fix, it's going to be a lot of, what do they call it? Uh, feast or famine, right? So yep. that's what we always say. So <laughs> that's why, that's why most break fix guys like to go to MSP. They think, Oh, okay, well now I'll just get a check. Well, that's another thing. If you really are going to be an MSP, be an MSP. Yeah. Don't be, don't be a break fix on retainer, which to be honest <laughs> with you, that's what I was, you know, um, at the beginning because okay. I didn't understand that, okay, MSP is not they're just paying me and they can call me whenever. MSP is, is you become a part of their company. You become a, a vital uh, component to keep them working. Yeah. So as an MSP, you know, it's not just, um, I'm not just selling my, my hours of, of support. You're selling them, you know, not being down. You're selling them security. You're selling mm-hmm. them peace of mind. You're selling them on uh, not having to spend however much on, on, on a ransom. You know, this is, it, it's a lot more and, and this, and there's a lot more uh, maintenance and things involved. Yeah. So. Well, that's the idea of manage, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing again, but it's a lot of people say MSP and all it is is they, they're getting a paycheck and they're just waiting for them to call them. Yeah, no, so no. You, you can't do that. And if you do that, not on top of that, if you start doing your numbers and you, you know, you're not doing the proper maintenance, you're going to realize that you could have saved, you know, so many hours or whatever. Yeah. If you would have done the proper maintenance. Yeah. I like that break fix on retainer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> on retainer, yeah. Great. Jorge. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a good time. Um, I hope I will see you out on the road again at some point, maybe yeah. at an ASCII event in the future. So, <laughs> Um, and yep hey have a great day okay send it thank you so much all right bye